We are going to walk you through how to master a beef Wellington. This is level 11 Wellington. It's insane. What's a beef Wellington? Really simply, it's tenderloin wrapped with chopped mushrooms, maybe a little prosciutto, and then pastry. And the amazing thing about Weep Wellington is it's actually this really incredible test of a cook's skill. Here's what a Wellington is though, <clears throat> just so we're clear. That's a tenderloin, duh. This is mushroom duck cell. This is your pastry. Not to scale, obviously. This tenderloin, let's just say it's medium rare, 25 degrees Fahrenheit. This pastry on the outside, it's gonna be 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Right on the inside here, to make sure the pastry is actually cooked and done, probably has to get to about 200 Fahrenheit. That's that like, nice starch temperature. The steam will souffle, it'll puff up a little bit. 300 degrees, 200 degrees. That's getting awfully close to overcooking our tenderloin, right? So think about it like you've got your cozy house, you've got the outside elements, your little cabin. Between your cozy interior and the exterior, you need to make some insulation, right? So this pastry's your wall, it's the siding of the house. So the rain hits it, the heavy weather hits it, right? But in between, this is our duct cell. This is our insulation, okay? This is gonna protect the meat. That way we can hammer the pastry and get it flaky, crispy, crumbly, dark, brown, delicious. So that's the trick. You need the meat, you need the mushrooms, you need the pastry. You need all three. Here we go. You're making your Wellington. Time to get going on Duxel. Super simple. We have all the measurements for you on ChefSteps.com, but you don't really need to measure this one. A little rule of thumb I like to use when I'm making Duxel, because I like the sweetness of the shallots, I kind of do a two to one. Two to one mushroom. Mushrooms again, they're like 95% moisture. They're gonna shrink down into almost nothing. There's about 800 grams, 400 grams shallot. So the only thing you have to measure, I would say in the Wellington, I would measure the pastry every time, the pastry crust. The rest of the stuff you can just eyeball. Here's where it gets fun. So he's literally just chopping up the mushrooms. Again, the benefit of this is you're gonna have all these like small bits of mushroom that are gonna sear and caramelize and still have texture without turning into mush. You know, we call it hashade. Slice, chop, mince down to, you know, just like a little crumble. And as we cook them, they're gonna get even smaller. So all these are gonna be probably the quarter this size. I think you should put more butter than you think. It's gonna make your life easier. That wasn't enough. Just FYI, that was just my first slice of butter. You could do olive oil though. You could do any, any fat you want here, you know? Again, for this sort of thing too, I like a big open pan. Gets rid of the heat as fast as possible. The bigger the pot, the heavier the pot, the more energy that goes into the pot instead of the mushrooms, it just takes longer. The longer the mushrooms cook, the more likely they'll turn to mush, less likely they'll caramelize. That's some good smelling butter though. Let's add a little bit of salt. Okay, so I got a little bit of color here. I'm gonna start adding mushrooms. Can't add all the mushrooms at once. You hear that sizzle change? So if you were to like just, I'm in a rush, ah, I gotta like hurry up and get the duck cell done. It's like the one thing I wouldn't rush on. The Wellington, in my mind, is like really, really, really all about technique. If the duck cell's too wet, the tenderloin's literally gonna be like fall out from the inside, the mushrooms are gonna fall out, the pastry's gonna be soggy, and you're like, I don't get it. Get rid of this water now. Get rid of it now and you don't have to deal with it later. And you're starting to see all these like fine bubbles. Those fine bubbles are that fat starting to fr actually fry. Here's the big deglazing trick that nobody tells you. Just put a teeny, 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 teeny bit. And look, it's like brand new again. This is where you should be in the end. So you've got really nicely, deeply caramelized mushroom with color. They're loose, it's not puree. You know it's gonna work in your Wellington later, because look, if I pack that into a little pile, see how nice and set they get together? Went from 1,300 grams of total volume to 475. That's 800 grams of water. That's not gonna be trying to get through our crust and make our crust soggy. That's duck cell. If you want to know how to break down a tenderloin, you came to the right place. There's a lot of advantages to breaking one down yourself. It's cheaper, you get a lot of cuts out of it. You know, you buy one steak, it can be like 40 bucks a pound. You buy a whole one, it's like 23 bucks a pound. First thing is the whole tenderloin. There's only like a couple few parts to it. 
you've got like the nose and then you've got this like they call it a chain and again like a lot of good butchery you'll see like you don't really need a knife all the time so this chain pull off that snack crackle pop that's good so I got my tray I'm gonna make a fat pile fat pile This is whole tenderloin breakdown. Basic bottom line is you can go to the butcher store. This is what you ask for, a cannon. What do we want to do with the tenderloin? We want to get some flavor built into the tenderloin. So what I'm going to do is sear it. That's going to get rid of some moisture, but it's also going to add a lot of flavor. Then I'm going to put it in an oven. So I'm, I'm going to do our low temperature oven technique. You know, probably take 30 minutes, an hour, but it'll be perfectly cooked edge to edge. It's just like dry sous vide, you know? The only hang up is you gotta have your oven at the right temperature. You can skip this step if you have like real dry tenderloin. I've actually never seen anybody pre-cook a tenderloin. Let's sear it. Oil on the meat. This is searing for flavor here. So I've got a hot pan, tenderloin goes in. Bam! I want the whole thing to look like this. All that crackle and pop, that's moisture leaving. That's moisture that's going now that won't go later through your crust. I got my tenderloin, a little spicy Dijon. I like to have my Wellington with Dijon later too. So I just like, you know, just get that Dijon everywhere. A little bit of salt. Again, I don't go too crazy on the salt on this one. That's good. So this is probably gonna take 30 to 40 minutes. Again, if you don't want to skip it, you can totally skip it. But again, you're just like increasing the chance that you're not gonna have a really flaky crust. When I cut it, man, I want to hear it like <laughs> Otherwise, don't even call it crust. That's the canon chapter. You can buy pastry. Some places, if you live by a good shop, like a good uh, pastry shop, they'll sell you dough, you know? Which isn't a bad, uh, isn't a bad option. This is the Chef Seps Pat Brise. Da, 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 da. So here's the thing you, you gotta know. Keep it cold, roll it out, try to work quick. This is our double batch that we made. From this double batch, we're gonna have our main wrap, and we're also gonna have our lattice. This is about the maximum length you need. I'd say I probably need about this much for my lattice, if I'm gonna be real diligent about it. I'm gonna keep this in the fridge for now. And my lattice piece, I'm gonna roll out. I'm actually just gonna go as wide as the cutter because as soon as you cut it, you're gonna pull it apart. And I just wanna make sure I have enough length to cover the Wellington and have a little bit of extra wiggle room on it. I'm gonna just grab this final little edge of the pastry and I'm just gonna cut, 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 cut. If your dough's made well and it's homogenous enough that you can just pull them apart but usually what you want to do is just put it back in the fridge just for a minute and then cut it with a knife it's amazing how fast dough warms up you know and just be aware of other projects you have in your house like if you've got a turkey in the oven your oven's been on 400 degrees all day your kitchen's probably hot and this dough is probably getting really warm you know or you got a small kitchen i'm just kind of looking for and making sure this lattice like opens up we're looking pretty good over here Put it back in the fridge for five, 10 minutes. The freezer is even better. We've got all of our components ready to go and now we're gonna assemble. I roll out plastic. I roll out prosciutto. I roll out the duxelle. I roll up the tenderloin. So your only goal here is just to get this uh, prosciutto, again, ham, spinach, whatever you got, laid out on a nice fine layer. So you don't have any big gaps between the uh, meat and the mushroom. This is what's gonna make the Wellington later on just like snug and perfect, and these perfect slices that look beautiful. Next up, duck sale. Remember we made it with butter, saturated fat, gets firm in the fridge. So you don't wanna like start spreading hard stuff, it's gonna rip up your prosciutto. But what I like to do is just like put a little bit, if you like a light chop, don't have to freak out about making it perfectly even just yet. Okay, I'm gonna switch to a little pallet knife. Push, 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 push. I don't want a bunch of air bubbles because I don't want it steaming and souffling and puffing up on me. I want it dense. If 
But let's just grab our tender line, line it up, make sure we got enough width here. That's kind of cutting it close, but pretty good, you know? And then the other thing is like, do we have enough uh, width this way? So I'll start on that corner and just like, da -da 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 -da. you don't have to do this, but like, woo, that's pushing it. So I'm gonna spread it out just a little bit more. So you can wrap this whole thing up and put it in the fridge for a couple days. You know what I mean? Not a big deal. But bottom line is like, you know, it cooked, I seared, you know, da da da. This could actually be still a little steamy, a little warm. It's not gonna hurt. But what you don't wanna have is a hot tenderloin and then you're wrapping the pastry, the pastry gets warmed up, it starts slacking all over, you rip it, then it becomes a big pain in the ass. So what I do here is just like a, this first one, nice and tight. And I think people grab these sides too early and then you end up with like a big ball. You don't wanna do that when you're dealing with pastry or any of the charcuterie stuff where you're making a roulade or something. I just wanna make sure I catch up to any of these like loose ends of prosciutto. This is where this like plastic wrap is just awesome. It's your best friend. We'll grab it from the middle and tuck it in. If you use the back of your knife too sometimes, I mean be careful, but like push in like that. You get a nice tight, even you wanna keep it looking like a cannon. Easy to turn the cannon into a football. So that's feeling pretty good. That's feeling nice and tight. I'm gonna start closing this end up here. If you end up rolling one of these and it's like a big dome, the ends are gonna cook way faster than the middle. You're, you're adding like doubling the insulation in the middle. So if you get a nice cylinder, you're gonna like already ahead of the curve there, you know? This guy, fridge, freezer, whatever, we're gonna come right back to it pretty damn fast. We are so close. We've got our cannon wrapped in duxelle, wrapped in prosciutto. Now we're gonna wrap it in pastry. One more little tip, parchment paper, wax paper, all that stuff is just awesome if you can get, if you have it or if you can get sheets of it. I'm just gonna flip this over, leave it on that. It's okay if it's bigger, it's gonna come in handy, watch. So I'll just like steal that. That's gonna be the bottom so I can like land that half right here. There we go. Egg wash. I don't know what other chef's tricks are for egg wash but I like to really work it in because it gets it goes from just an egg wash, which is just like you can see it, to being a glue. Because when you're brushing back and forth, you're mixing in starch, let, really letting it get sticky and work in. You know when you get super glue and they're like, wait two minutes, then stick it together. You know, waiting for that little tackiness, that's what we got going on here. So I'm gonna just like, right in the middle there, this one. Pinch, 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 pinch. This is a lot. Obviously like a lot of pastry, that's okay. Big pinch, and then I do this. One, two, three, get rid of those. This guy up, get my hand under there. This guy's gonna fold nice and neat. Doink. This is our base. Again, like this is most wellies are like, boom, done. Pop it in the oven, egg wash it, pop it in the oven, you're golden, which you can do. But we're gonna do one last little beauty at the end. I just think it looks, a thousand times better. Like you've come this far, I like the little lattice in the end. But you want it to be square, that way it's gonna cook pretty much even, like at least from here to here to here to here to here. The more you squeeze the end, it gets all thick here. If it's thick here, it's gonna be very hard to get it actually cooked all the way through. So one thing I am gonna do is let this kind of chill out. When I say chill out, I actually mean chill out. Relax, get cold, sit in the fridge. See, if you're in the fridge long enough and you're nice and firm, you should be able to like, just get a little more tough, a little more durable. I wanna make sure I have like a nice sticky egg wash base so it really glues to it. But at the same time, I wanna have just a little bit runway so it can still slide around. If I wait too long, this will dry up and then you lay the lattice down and it's like glued, you know what I mean? Okay. So cut that, cut that, that always gets in the way, I think. Get rid of any stuff that's gonna basically be noise during the process. If you're not happy with the position, you don't wanna like pick it back up. You just wanna like slowly start to work each little diamond. This is where that wet egg wash is really forgiving. So each little 
diamond, I'll get like, I'll literally push a little bit. I get a quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch. It adds up to like a whole inch down below. I don't worry about these ends too much. I just make sure they're firm and glued on. Dude, I love a heavy egg wash. It's so shiny. You want to egg wash it while it's nice and cold. I think this is the first time I made the full Wellington without like a half a bottle of peanut. Hey -o. It was still fun. Okay. You can put these anywhere. I like to get them placed and then I come back with the tweezers and sort them out and move them around or whatever. <sighs> Holy smokes! I'm ready to bake. This guy's going in the oven. Da 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 da. You see it's on the very bottom rack. That's actually a good thing. It's gonna sear it so we have a nice brown crust. There we go. I think we got a winner. You want a bread knife for this for sure. Nice small strokes. I think if you overcook the meat, that protein tightens up and it's gonna push juice into the crust too. So there's a fine line, you can overcook it. As a meat gets to that medium well, it squeezes and it starts putting that juice out there. It's gonna get better from here, guys. Feels so good that it's not wrecked. See, I'm just like you at home. When it turns out, I'm excited. That's pretty beautiful. We've got Zhu here. Oh my god. You know, get a little trefoil in the Zhu. It's Wellington. Man, this light, it's just not, it's like lunchtime. It's so dark. Haven't you seen the Anthony Bourdain episode? What's up with all the serial killers around here? This is, this is insane. I think Robichon would be proud. One of the cool things about the squash one or a veggie one too, you're never gonna overcook it. So you can just bake it, bake it, bake it, bake it. It's kind of got like a little spiral going, I like it. The meat and the carbs and the umami and all that stuff in one bite. Mm. Hey, you guys, come on, I don't like eating by myself.